I think one of the challenges for any brand in today's time, any media brand, is how do you win trust? You know, we have a word in television which is often used and much misused and abused, which is TRPs, television rating points. My belief has always been that there is a, a need to redefine TRPs. It should stand for trust and respect points. Because the real challenge of our times is not just how do you get television rating points, but how do you win the trust, respect of viewers and readers. And I think sometimes we tend to confuse the notion of trust with popularity. You can be popular. That doesn't necessarily mean you are trustworthy. And I think this it's an in, almost intangible. How do you define this notion of trust? Because linked to this notion of trust is another interesting word called credibility. How does a brand build credibility? It cannot be built in a week. It cannot be built overnight. And I think too many of us, be it in any aspect of the media, be it in PR, be it in marketing, advertising or journalism, tend to believe that we can almost overnight win trust or win credibility. To my mind, this is an incremental process that has to be done step by step. It's almost a tortuous process at the end of which maybe if you stick to your core values, you can actually reach your destination. So I think the challenge is to be patient, the challenge is to be consistent and the challenge to my mind is to stick to your core values. If you can do that, then I do believe that you can win the trust of, of your client, you can win the trust of your viewer in our instance or of your reader. But it's a long haul. It doesn't happen overnight. And I think we must be resistant to the pressures to try and overnight try and build trust. It won't happen. I think it's very clear that social media has created a surround sound which can disorient the best of us. It is a bit like an echo chamber. And when you are in an echo chamber, the sound can almost rattle you. So I think social media has done that. It's become a disruptive influence. It's disrupted the media landscape. And I think the challenge of our times is to, to understand the nature of the disruption that's taking place rather than being swayed away by it. I wouldn't say embrace it, but certainly start recognizing what social media is all about. Don't allow it to uh, sweep you off the floor, but find ways to engage with social media. I believe today we are in a multimedia world in the truest sense of the word, what I call Media 360. And platforms no longer matter. What matters is content, the quality of your content. Even in the PR industry, the quality of the message that you're sending out, to my mind, is critical. It's not enough for you to, uh, to you know, jazz up the message. What is key is does your message have an intrinsic value to it? And that is something which where I believe you can use all these platforms, including social media, to send out a powerful message that people will soon over time begin to trust and begin to feel that this is a message which is worth it. I think what they don't teach you in media schools is ethics. And ethics is something which, you know, ultimately is again, uh, core to any business. Uh, you cannot take shortcuts when it comes to ethics. Uh, ethics cannot be compromised upon. And my belief is ethics is linked to a critical word which is conscience. I believe brands that have a conscience, brands that have core ethical values sustain and last much longer than brands which try to take shortcuts and compromise on ethics. Uh, to my mind, it's that it's that value of, 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 of it's that value of ethical behavior which determines the average brand from a great brand which which really tells the real story um, in in the case of journalism i think the core value has to be to stick to facts above all else to to be honest to facts in in the pr world it has to be again in my view to stick to your core message uh, to my mind, the core of journalism should always be in the center. Uh, the ability to, to be able to appreciate that there could be two sides to a story. That stories are not always black and white. 
that there is a color called gray also that exists. And the more complex stories are often found in shades of gray. And the challenge for journalism is to locate the complexity of a story. It's very easy to be caught in these polarities. The challenge, as I keep repeating, is to somewhere or the other have a dialogue. I think journalism should be able to stick to facts and the opinion should be dialogue based. The opinion should not be, it should not be forced down someone's throat. The opinion should, be, should, should respect the viewer, should respect the reader. Opinions cannot, opinions are free. Facts are sacred. We tend to mix facts and opinion almost all the time now in journalism. And that's what's caused this credibility crisis. I think the larger credibility crisis is because the lines have got blurred between fact and opinion, whether it's on television and in some instances even in print. So respect the difference that exists between facts and opinion. Number two, I believe that we must be ready to, to really look at journalism as something which is beyond television rating points or box office. This is not about popularity contests. This is about, in my view, about having a basic intrinsic respect for information and for knowledge. That's, to my mind, the way in which journalism should move. And thirdly, in my view, journalism must retain a strong ethical core. Journalism cannot be about manipulation. It cannot be about manipulating information or falsifying facts. It should be at the end of the day about sticking to a core ethical value which is truth above all else. To my mind, if you can combine knowledge with truth, you will have empowered your viewer or reader. I think a lot of this is exaggerated at times to believe that journalists are, uh, you know, constantly being asked to compromise their independence. Yes, there are uh, threats to the newsroom. There are corporate pressures, there are political pressures, there are owner pressures. But let's not also exaggerate them. At the same time, I think it is important to realize that there must be a Chinese wall that must exist between the owner, the corporate, the politician and the journalist. Newsrooms must to whatever extent possible be insulated from these outside pressures. You cannot have what I call supari journalism. You cannot have agenda driven journalism which is driven by the interests of the corporate owner or driven by a politician. Journalism at its core, if you are to retain credibility, must be insulated from these pressures. You know, when I started journalism in the late 1980s, to be very honest, to be in PR was looked down upon. There was a sense that PR was someone who was a PR person was constantly manipulating and falsifying facts. The PR person was almost bribing the journalists, was the ecosystem in which I started off in journalism. I believe over time the PR world has evolved. We now talk of corporate communications. The true meaning of PR, I believe, is effective communication. Ultimately, you have to communicate a message. And today, journalists rely on, on this entire large PR machinery to also get a chance to effectively communicate their message. You need to know 